Welcome to the Activated Story Theater's 131st podcast. This episode, we bring you Talk, a story from Ghana. In Africa. Hi, I'm Dennis. And I'm Kimberly. And together we are the Activated, Activated Actors. Actors. Coming to you from West Warwick in Rhode Island. Yes, we've been spending a lot of time in Rhode Island and Massachusetts lately, um, gearing up for hot season. This year we're going to be working at two haunted houses. We are working like crazy in the back end of um, a haunted house that's supposed to open in West Warwick. And we are doing a lot of painting, scenic design, costumes, um, trying to get that ready. We'll also be back at Barrett's Haunted House this year in Abington, Massachusetts for at least two weekends. And then our performance schedule with our own shows it will kind takes of us take away. over. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we like to help out in haunted houses whenever we can when we've got some time. And um, a special interest in the one in West Warwick that should be opening in this season for the first time because our son is heading that up. If you've been listening to our podcast for a few years, you may remember our son uh, performing with us. Yes. And now he's doing his own things. So Zephyr, one of his lifelong goals has been to open a haunted house ever since he went to one when he was about nine years old and got scared. Yes, when he was about nine, he went to the one in Indianapolis at the Indianapolis Children's Museum, which was a really good haunted house. It still is a good haunted house. Yeah. They do great, great um, fun for kids, especially. They have a new theme every year and love that haunted house. Yada, anyway, yada. So, that, so that's where we discovered haunted houses and started falling in love with them. And now we are working behind the scenes and, and having some fun playing in haunted houses as well as doing what we do with our National Train Theater. Little sideline for us. Yes. Little fun sideline. We have some upcoming shows in October. And we'll be telling you about that at the end of the story. And now we bring you Talk, a story from Ghana. Once upon a time in Ghana, there was a farmer. And one day, he went out digging for some yams to take to the market to sell. While he was digging, one of the yams began to talk, and it said to him, It's about time you showed up. You never weeded me. You never took care of me. Oh, but now, you come around with your digging stick. Leave me alone! Oh, my, I did, did that yam just talk? The surprised farmer turned around, and he saw his cow. So he asked his cow... Um, did you say something? But the cow kept on chewing her cud and didn't respond at all. Oh, I, I should have known. The cow can't talk. How silly of me. <laughs> but then the man's dog spoke up. That wasn't the cow talking. It was the yam. He said to leave him alone. You better listen to what he says. My, my dog is talking back to me? Oh, how dare he. And the man became angry because his dog had never talked before. So he took up his knife and cut down a palm branch to whip the dog. Hey, put that branch down, uh, said who, the palm tree. That, who said that? that? That couldn't have been the tree. <sighs> oh, well, uh, I guess I better put the palm branch down. P put me down softly. Did that branch just speak to me? Uh, I better put it down softly like it said, I think. Yeah, I'll put it down on this stone here. Oh, get that thing off of me! Ah, uh, this is crazy. I better run into the village and, and tell people what's happening. So the farmer took off like a bolt of lightning. He ran towards the village. On the way, he met a fisherman going the other way with a net in his hand. Hey, why are you running? Well, my yam said, leave me alone. And then the dog said, listen to what he says. And when I went to beat the dog with a palm branch, the palm tree says, put that branch down. And then the palm branch said, put me down softly. And then the stone said, hey, take that thing off me. What's so frightening about that? Said the fisherman. Fisherman's net said, well, did he take it off the stone? Ah! Yelled the fisherman as he threw the net to the ground. And he and the farmer ran and ran until they met a weaver with a bundle of cloth on his head. Hey, why are you running? Asked the weaver. And the farmer panted, uh, my, my yam said, leave me alone. And then the dog said, listen to what he says. And the palm tree said, put that branch down. And then the palm branch said, put me down softly. And then the stone said, hey, take that thing off me. And the fisherman continued. And then my net said, well, did he take it off the stone? Huh? That's nothing to get excited about, said the weaver. And then his bundle of cloth said, oh, yes, it is. You'd run too if it happened to you. 
And with that, the farmer, the fisherman, and the weaver all began to run like crazy towards town. And soon they passed a man bathing in the river. Why are you running? shouted the man in the river. Well, the farmer replied, My yam said, Leave me alone. And then the dog said, Listen to what he says. The palm tree said, uh, Put that branch down. And then the palm branch said, Put me down softly. And then the stone said, Hey, take that thing off me. And the net said, Did he take it off the stone? You'd run too if it happened to you, said my cloth. Well, that's nothing to get excited about, said the man in the river. Well, wouldn't you run if you were in their position, said the river. And with that, the man jumped out of the river ah! and began to run with the others. They ran and ran until they came to the house of the chief of the village. The chief's servants brought his stool out, and the chief came and sat on it to listen to their complaints. The men began to recite all of their troubles. Uh, my yam said, leave me alone. And then the dog said, listen to what he says. The palm tree said, put that branch down. And then the palm branch said, put me down softly. And the stone said, hey, take that thing off me. And then my net said, well, did he take it off the stone? And my cloth said, you'd run too if it happened to you. And the river said the same. Well, the chief listened patiently. But he couldn't help scowling at them. Now, this is surely a wild story. You'd better get back to work before I punish you for wasting my time and disturbing the peace. So the farmer, the fisherman, the weaver, and the bather got up and left the village. <sighs> Nonsense like that just upsets me. <sighs> and it just upsets the whole village. To which his stool replied, Yes, imagine that. A talking yam. <laughs> That's the story of Talk from Ghana. You know, I think that explains a lot. What does it explain? I mean, yams are always yammering. I just don't get ha, it. Ha, 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 ha. But you know, that was one of my favorite stories when I was really little. I, I don't, I'm not sure I'd even started to school yet, but um, it, it was in... My brother's school book, and he's a few years older than me, one of my brothers, and uh, he he would read it, and I listened to it, and, and I thought it was really funny, and I especially loved the, the end when the yam says, uh, when the stool... When the stool talks to the when, chick. When the stool says, imagine a talking yam. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> so, after all these years, here we are doing this story. And hopefully making you laugh, too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like I said, we do have some live shows coming up so that you can come see us in person on stage at a library near you. Um, if you are anywhere near Lima, New York, we will be there October 2nd and 3rd. October 3rd, we'll be having a show for all the families at 6.30 in the evening. And um, we're going to be there for two days thanks to a Target grant. And so we'll be doing programs for like the um, preschoolers at the nursery time. We'll be doing a American Sign Language workshop and then we'll be doing some other workshops as well. And then the family program will be on October 3rd at 6 or 6.30. Check our website to make sure that I've got the times right on that. And then October 7th, we'll be returning to the library in Greenwich, Connecticut. Oh, I can't wait for that one. That's going to be a 3 o'clock show, and that'll be for the after-school kids. Um, so come join us after school. Come right over to the library, and we will have some fun. We'll be doing a story with ghosts in it to get ready for Halloween. But not too scary. No. It'll be fun scary. Um, then what else do we have coming up? In November, we'll be at the National Theater uh, in Washington, D.C., November 2nd. November 2nd. Part of the Saturday morning series at the National. It'll be our yeah. third time to appear oh, there. We're so happy to be invited back there. It's so much fun performing. I think it's like two blocks from where the president lives. Yeah, it's pretty close to this. It's 1600, and the president lives at 1800. No, the, the, the White House is 1600, and the... And the theater's 1800? Maybe. I know it's just a couple of blocks. It is on, on Pennsylvania Avenue. Yes. Right there, close to the White House. Close, close, close. Um, so two shows there on uh, November 2nd. 
And then from there, we are heading to Seaford, Delaware. We've also got shows coming up in Withville, Grayson, um, Virginia. So you need to check our website, activatedstorytheater.com. We are on the East Coast right now. So if you're on the East Coast, check our website and see what's coming up near you. We, we received a total of 12 Target grants for the mm-hmm. coming year. So we're going to be doing quite a few performances at schools and libraries funded by Target. Funded by Target, right. So hope to see you at a show this year, and we will catch you in October with a new story. Stay spooky. (laughs) Activated Story Theater is committed to bringing fun educational shows to schools and libraries nationwide. On stage, we use physical comedy, American Sign Language, imaginative props, and a giant oversized book to bring multicultural folk tales to life. For booking information, check out our website, activatedstorytheater.com, where you can also find out when the activated actors will be performing near you, read a story, or order one of our audio CDs. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or listen on Stitcher. We look forward to your comments and folktale suggestions. Stay activated. Until next time.